but you will have to uh, try it yourself otherwise you will not be able to grasp on what is actually happening and uh, it would uh, let's say cause a problem when you will need to make a final submission at the end of this interaction Alright, so I think we can start now. Start by sharing screen and okay. So is the screen visible? Clearly visible and am I clearly audible? forms basically in yesterday's uh, session we looked at forms and how to generate them but basically um, yeah okay. um, basically Django has its own uh, forms uh, that can basically do everything that we did in the last um, session but it can do it a lot quicker and uh, it can apply uh, various validations on its own so you don't have to do uh, uh, so you don't have to do that uh, inside your uh, function here right so to create a form first of all uh, you will need to create just here, you will need to create a new python file Python file and we'll just call it forms. Right. Uh, I don't know for some reason it is not uh, created by default, but you have to create it. All right. So now what we have to do is you have to import Django forms. All right. So you import in Django forms. Now, uh, to initialize a form, you basically have to create a class. Uh, it can be anything. I'll just call it new form. That is, new should can be anything. Form. Now it uh, inherits from forms dot form class. Okay. And why is this? Because when you inherit this. Uh, sorry. Uh, when the uh, create form class inherits from this class, it basically adds a, a, a functionality to it. Right? It adds uh, various uh, validation parameters and it adds uh, fields and everything 
so you don't have to initialize them yourself right so first of all uh, the first thing is the name of your uh, fields all right so let's say i am creating a field that has let's say a name right so i create a name variable which is of the type forms dot now uh, there are uh, various fields right okay? now there is a character field and let's say check and there is a forms dot i guess it's called boolean field okay? so forms has a bunch of fields which uh, which takes different kinds of uh, data for right, for example the character field takes text data uh, the boolean field takes a yes or a no or a one or a zero kind of data and i guess there is also a password field and there are a bunch of fields that you can look up in the jango documentation i'm not uh, going to go through every one of them because there are uh, because there are quite a few of them Right. Right. So, to uh, initiate a form, you basically create a class which inherits from the forms dot form class. Right. This is a Django class which helps you do everything uh, without actually having to do it. Right. So you won't have to add. Uh, Uh, let's say validators, and you guys know what validators are. Sorry, you guys know what uh, validators are. Right? Uh, for example, when you type in a password, uh, it shows you under the password it is too small or too weak. Right, so that is called a validator. Right, it uh, a validator basically validates what you can. All right. So uh, let's say uh, this character dot forms has a, a required field, right? Uh, this character dot forms, uh, sorry, uh, this character field has a validator, uh, a default validator called require. You can change it if you want, but it has a, a required field, and I guess boolean uh, has the validator of uh, if you're not tampering with it. Right, so there are quite a few validators that we'll look into in a minute. Right, so I'll say name the forms dot character field. Now I'll give it a I'll give it a label. Now what a label is basically uh, when you see forms. So like let me just pull out the template. So I can explain. in this template as you can see right here this is the input text right this is the name and this is the value right so what a label is basically block yeah what a label is basically is a uh, what is uh let me just go to so when i say sign in Let's say sign in. Okay. Long click. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so none of these are using labels. Uh, but what a label is basically, this is a label. Okay. When I click this, you see this thing above, right? 
this is a label this tells you what you need to uh, put inside the text box right so when i will run this you see this for yourself so i'll say label enter your name right and i'll give it a max length of one two. the name can be let's say 55 is the maximum limit so we we'll just call it 55 right so now how do we uh, basically initiate uh, how do we display this form so i'll just say i'll be creating a different page so as to not tamper with this thing okay. uh, so as to not tamper with this because we'll be using this later so i'll say index Okay, let me just change the URLs file a bit. Alright, so I need to link this web page. So I have to edit the URLs part. Alright, so I'll say and this will call views for index 2 and the name will be. Right. So I made a connection here. When uh, when in the browser, I'll say something like one two seven like this dot eight hundred slash two. This will be triggered. Right. So I'll just say like this. We can be function here for index to call it response. Right, and here what I'll do is first of all I'll do something like if response dot method is equals to post. It's very similar. This is what we did here. It should not create any, um, let's say, problems. But yeah. Then I'll say something like the form. let's say something form is equals to and let me import it okay from dot form from dot forms import and what was the name of our that we have imported a form we basically first create an instance of the form now it was called a new form right and this will create a new form i'll just remove this for now and i'll show how this form basically looks and then we'll basically start with another uh, post syntax Right, so I'll say uh, return render of response from a run new slash index two dot ml and I'll pass in the form. I think we exist uh, inside the uh, web page by using the keyword uh, using the key form. Right, so I'll edit this a bit. 
Now, as I told you, here I created a uh, user-defined form. But what I can now just do is this. Right now, this takes care of everything. Right, this takes care of uh, showing the uh, form on the screen or the validations and everything. Right, I'm just. Do this right. Uh, we done this, and then I'll show you what I just did. Right. So, so Python. Why? 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 Basically, what it did was did not differentiate. Sorry, did not uh, differentiate between these two. So, uh, for the interpreter, both of them was a single uh, element. Like comma. CD to Python to how can it not find it? It's right here. Now we can inside Python to we will say here Python any of UI run So as I told you, when I type in two, okay, in the block, and the CS is put in here. Just date. As you can see right here, uh, the form was auto generated. Uh, the only thing I did was pass in the form. All right. Now, what happens here is I uh, just explained from the beginning. And apologies for a lot of silly mistakes. But it happens. Shift it here. Yeah. What I did was first of all I created a new form. All right. 
and this form is this entire form right so i'll just start from the beginning first of all you create a new a file called forms and you import uh, the forms class from the django library and then you uh, and then you create a new class for the form you want to make and then after that you inherit uh, you basically inherit forms dot form and this basically uh, takes care of everything for you right uh, for example it takes care of all the validators and everything now uh, you start creating your uh, form which is done by first a variable and that uh, variable is uh, assigned to a form field right so character field is a form field and boolean field is a form field right? and there are a bunch of different fields which take uh, different parameters on their own right so there are a lot of parameters and a lot of fields so you will have to look them up in the django uh, documentation okay. this is how you create a form now you initialize this new form you, you initialize this new form and i passed in this new form and that form is accessible using the form keyword okay. now this is the crucial point here you can see I just passed in the form um, variable and I got this in return. What it basically does is what it basically does is it uh, sorry, Django basically converts this variable into a series of uh, syntax uh, HTML tags. Let me just see if it is visible here. As you can see right here, okay. as you can see right here, only passing in this form variable generated this entire code, uh, this entire HTML code on its own. So, just passing is this uh, this passing in this uh, variable generated this tag, this tag, and the two tags below it on its own, right? So, this is what Django can do. But as you can see, these um, forms do, uh, don't look a lot cleaner. Right, so this is why I use uh, user defined forms because uh, the Django used forms are not very great. Right, but it does have some features like say SP, save this, and zero this again, and it moves you. Right, so there are a bunch of um, alignment uh, let's say alignment options for forms for example there's a, a sp if i remember there's a s something else i don't know what these are but you can style your forms by using as underscore and this changes according to how you want to style it right. and I'll just Tag here, just of the type submit and name the submit 
Right okay. now, when I click this uh, uh, submit query, look what happens. Right, this uh, very nice uh, JavaScript. Um, it's a JavaScript in use uh, box pops up, which says fill out this form. All right. If I say this form, and I do this, and it says please check if uh, please check this box if you want to proceed. I'll check this, and now I can proceed to. Otherwise, would um, I would not be able to uh, proceed forward. Uh, proceed forward. So this is what validators are, and this is uh, uh, what. Uh, Django can do on its own, but otherwise, if you create user-generated forms, you will have to uh, check each condition yourself, and then have to uh, even show the um, errors yourself. But on the other hand, Django does this for you. But on the downside, it looks really ugly and not very sophisticated. And if you want to change the style of your um, Let's say, if you want to change the style of your form, you cannot do that. You can do that, but it is a long, long process. Right? So I'll just say this. Um, right, so now we took some data from the form. Now, how do we use the? Now how do we use that data? Right. Now to use that data, we First, let's say if response dot method is equals to post, right? So, right, and if we post something, it will move inside this if statement, right? So now we have. Another instance of the form, but, but this time we'll do something. What we'll do is we'll basically say response dot post. Right. So what I did was I created a new form, but this time I basically and uh, this time I put in the response. Itself inside of it, all right. So when I pressed submit, I just print it here. So you can print this on post. I'll type this and explain it in a bit. All right. So now save this and let the server know. I'll tell you what I'm talking. About. So this is a form. It is in a submit query. As you can see, uh, you have seen this here, right? We have seen this when we uh, played with forms in the last session. So this statement prints it, obviously. And now what we're doing here is we are passing in this. We are passing in this entire thing. Let this entire dictionary from here to uh, here to here inside a new form so, uh, inside our new form. Right. So here we created a blank form, and here we created a uh, here we created a filled form. Right. So now we'll check if this is valid. Now let's say I'll say something like if form um, dot is valid. Uh, print print let's say name is equal to form um, dot mean data. I'll fetch a name from you. 
and yeah, that is it. I'll just print the name. name. And I'll say check is equals to form dot mean data. And I'll just call check. And I'll print both of these. I'll let the server load. Let this the page this form check this and submit query. And as you can see, this form. Okay, I have the name to pronounce it. My other this form. Do not click this, it tells me because of this one. And here inside this console here, you can see this returns this form because of this. And it returns true because I checked this, right? So I'll just explain this once again. Right? Now I'll just make a little tweak uh, to show you how this changes, right? Now I passed in another uh, parameter called required is equals to false, and I'll reload this, and you can see this. Um, and I can now submit the query without checking this, right? Because in the validation part, I passed in required is equals to false, but right? this means that I do not require to check this, right? And this obviously returns false here because the uh, boolean field is not checked and it returns a false. Right, so uh, this will be it for today. I'll be uh, basically revising the whole thing once again so you can understand it, and I'll do this from scratch. Right, so the first thing we did was create a new form. Right, to do this, you have to create a new class, right, and the name of the class can be anything, but it should inherit from forms.form class another class another Django class called forms dot form no, uh, called form but inherited but existing forms now uh, this is basic um import stuff we did like three to four weeks ago so you uh, inherit this class and then you um initialize the fields of your form right like i want a name field Okay. Now, what type of field do I want it to be? I want it to be a character field. Now, let's say a password field. All right? Let's say forms dot. Uh, there is no password field. Forms dot. Password and potency to thing. We'll just say um, so I guess uh, so does not have a password field for some reason and if, even if it does I cannot find it so so you uh, initialize the uh, fields of the form which is done by uh, move up the way, which is done by first of all giving it a name and then a type of the field. Okay. 
So this is a text field or a character field in Django terms. And then I initialized a uh, field by the name check, which is the type Boolean, and it is not required. That's it. I created a form. Now I go here, I create a new form and I pass in the new form like we learned in the last session right and this part will not run because when the uh, when a website first loads it loads into a uh, sorry, it loads into the get method right so this part will not run it will just basically create a new form and pass in that form to a website web page and here you need to understand that this form uh, tag is really important because this basically um, works with the submit button all right and when you press the submit button when you press a submit button inside a form uh, sorry, when you press a submit button that is inside uh, a form tag it basically refreshes the page and passes that form data to the server. So whatever kind of form you are making, it always has to be inside this form uh, tags, uh, inside these tags, all right? Opening form and closing form, these tags, any form you create for a web page, whether it be user defined or Django, you need to create it inside form tag right now this is the CSF token it is a security token like we learned in the last class and when you simply uh, pass in the variable and then Django takes care of everything else all right it it will be uh, converted into um, uh, it, it will be converted into HTML tags on its own so you will not have to worry about it like then we see this entire thing pretty simple and when we post something and we need we obviously need a submit button to post something because when you press the submit button the form uh, the form or the web page is precious and the form data is passed to the server all right so you need to create the input uh, sorry, uh, the submit button uh, individually or let's say differently. <coughs> when you press the submit button, uh, the response method changes to post, and this part is executed. Right. So first of all, we printed the response dot post. We we basically. Give me a second, let me connect the charger. All right, so yeah, I printed out, out the response. And I just go over this response here. Okay. This is the response we got. <coughs> Let's go over to something. Yeah, I'll go over to this one. Okay. Right. So this is the response we got. And what we did here was uh, the CISF token is uh, what it is. So we'll not go over this. Now you can see the name of this key's name it is the same key as we initialized here right i could um call it name two and name two would appear here as the key right so this is the correlation between the uh, variable name and how it appears in the post uh in the post method right and then check is check is on now check is on means you uh, clicked on the um, checkbox and, and obviously it has the same name as the variable 
this key has the same name as the variable. Right. And the submit button, we, we created this individually and this is not part of the form. So it is the uh, this key is similar to the name here. This name. Right. And when we do not check the uh, button, let me just see there's something that was one we will not check the yeah when we do not check the button the check uh the check a key is not inside this post form uh this uh post right so this is how this works and then i created a new filled form all right now you need to understand that this is a new form blank form and this is a filled form let me just see if i can this is this and i'll just see what happens let the server reload this is reload this i say this form i click this and i submit query now, as you can see, this form has been already filled. All right. Why is this? Because we returned a filled form here. Right. I created a new filled form here, which can return the filled form here. And this is a new form. So you need to understand that this is a filled form and this is a new form. All right. So I just did it so you can understand how this was happening. All right. Now what we did was we said if form dot is valid. Now this basically uh, this basically validates what you uh, put in the form. Right? For example, I said that the max length can be two uh, two fifty five. Let's call the max length be four, and I'll show you how this changes things. Right? I'll just do that. and I'll type in some verbiage. Now you can see I. Uh, cannot type anything more than four, right? This is how max length changes things. But if for some reason uh, you somehow uh, bypass this and uh, tamper with the form, all right? This uh, is valid uh, thing which fail, right? And it would not go through with this. Like the form, so the forms dot uh, sorry, uh, the, the dot valid function basically checks the valid uh, the validity of the form. All right, if uh, it checks if the data you inputted is uh, what it was supposed to be. All right, so now we uh, basically create an uh, variable. It has the same name. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be the same name as here. Don't be confused about it. And then we called in clean uh, form dot clean data now why is this uh, clean data called because the clean data extracts it from this list here all right when you call form dot clean data it extracts this entire thing all right so we called uh, form dot clean data and just and because it's a dictionary we use the dictionary syntax and similarly we did this here and we printed it back to us right and i just have to bring them back to what they were otherwise the statement would fail okay. and as you can see this uh, this is how forms basically work right so does anyone has any doubt regarding this right now you need to go back experiment with all of this and try to come uh, with some innovative forms and you can just basically i'll just say django um, documentation you can go to this website or 
on the left side you can go to this documentation and it would tell you different kinds of classes let me just build a form yeah form class the view the template more on fields document form yeah as i was telling you uh, the form can be rendered as as a table using the dot as table it can be rendered using a paragraph using spl and it can be rendered using as ul all right so it does this and basically everything complex you need to uh, learn about form you can basically learn it from the documentation and as i told you it is very important to be able to use documentation all right because you see all of this cannot be basically uh, all of this cannot be taught all right you will have to try something i can just uh, basically show you what you're supposed to do and uh, the basics of this right you will have to experiment with it you will have to go through the documentation you will have to do everything else on your own because all of this right this is the working i show you the working that a different thing but let's say the labels all right i cannot go through every single label uh so every single uh, field and uh, all of their uh, parameters right so you will have to go through the documentation if you want to learn something more something advanced or something different right so i guess that's it for today's session uh, santosh please take the attendance i'll just stop sharing Santosh, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so I guess that's it for today. And thank you, everyone. You guys can leave. Thank you.